If you're thinking that these pencils are exactly the same as your regular graphite, but they just have a matte finish, you'd be wrong to think that. Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so this is a follow-on video from the last video I made um, about the overview or mini review of the uh, Faber-Castell uh, Pitt Graphite Matte Pencils. In the last video it was more of an introduction and we've done a few tests and everything where we tilted the graphite around in the light to see if it glared, to see if we really did have a matte finish. We've done the eraser test on there. Um, so if you've not seen that video and you want to see a little bit more testing and all that kind of stuff with the pencils, if you go and watch that video, um, I'll leave a link in the description below and it'll be in the end screen cards as well. That'll show you a little bit more about these pencils. And in the last video I said I was going to do a complete drawing with them um, so I can give a more of an in-depth review. And I've just finished this drawing here. Um, it was done entirely with um, the Faber-Castell matte pencils. Other than a few very light strokes with a mechanical pencil just on some of the um, very very small branches on there because that's one of the things I found with the pencils um, because they're quite a dark soft set you know they start from H and they go up to, sorry they start from HB and they go up to 14B you know it's quite a soft set of pencils there and I was finding it quite hard to get really fine lines really fine detail um, and the fact that the Faber-Castell pencils have got a little bit of carbon, I think, something like that, mixed in with them, you know, it made them behave a little bit different to regular graphite pencils. And I found, you know, getting really sharp, crisp, fine lines wasn't impossible or extremely difficult, but it was you just had to work a little bit harder at it, um, you know, to achieve that. So that's why at one point in the drawing I just went over to... Um, mechanical pencils just for the very very fine twigs hardly anything at all so pretty much 99.9% .9 of this drawing is all uh, Faber-Castell matte pencils and if I tilt it into, in the light um, tilt it around a little bit you can kind of see that there's hardly any glare on there at all only in a few areas where I really layered up and needed to press quite hard with the pencils you know on the darks of the trees in this area here you know I've got a little bit of glare but like I mentioned in the last video Faber-Castell do say on their website that with these pencils you get a reduced glare even though it says matte on the tin um, you know I think the reduced glare is a fairer statement you can get pure matte um, finishes with them if you press lightly and you don't layer up too much but what I found with that um, even though I'm working on a fairly smooth paper you know pressing lightly with these pencils um, you do get a slightly grainy look with them and you do tend to naturally want to just press a little bit harder with the pencil to try and fill the grain as you're shading and that in turn is going to lead to you know a little bit more glare now I will just say straight off the bat that if you're thinking that these pencils are exactly the same as your regular graphite but they just have a matte finish you'd be wrong to think that they're very close to that but they're not exactly that instantly um, you're going to feel a difference with them you know as soon as you start shading with them you can feel a little bit more bite on the paper with them There's a little bit more draggy if you know what I mean they just drag a little bit more on the paper but nothing like um, you know other carbon pencils and I suppose again I've got to bring in the uh, the Stedler Mars Lumograph Black uh, which I really don't want to compare these two I don't think it's a fair comparison I'm sure there's going to be lots of videos on YouTube uh, in the future doing shoot-offs between the two but honestly I don't think it's a valid video because they're two different pencils they're, they're designed to do two different things just because the Stedler Mars Lumograph Black um, is also a matte finish and it's very, very dark, a lot darker than these, um, you know, they are more like a carbon or charcoal pencil, whereas these are a lot closer 
to a graphite pencil um, and to incorporate these with your regular graphite pencils all in one drawing these are a better option I feel because they look more like graphite on the paper whereas um, other carbon pencils they look like two different mediums on the paper you know there's a bit of a mix, mismatch there um, you know when you look at the finished drawing when you've used um, you know carbon and regular graphite you know all on the same same drawing so there is a slight difference between regular graphite and these but these are the closest you're going to get out of all the pencils I've tested um, over the years I mean I have tested loads of different kinds of carbon pencils um, the Conte Pierre Noir, Wolf's carbon pencils many different kinds of charcoal pencils the Stedler Mars Lumograph Black um, and many many more some are good some are not so good but all have the place um, but there's one thing they all seem to share in common like I say and that is they don't look like a perfect match with graphite um, you have to really choose the area well like for example you might just have one or two really black areas um, in a drawing like maybe underneath a bridge or the windows on a building and that's fine to use those kind of pencils there but when you actually want to blend them into um, you know lighter graphite tones it can get a bit tricky you know because carbon doesn't erase very well at all but these erase quite well not quite as clean as regular graphite but like I say I do all that kind of testing um, in the last video I made about these so you might want to watch that just to kind of see the results you get there so really these do do something different to the, the Stedler Mars Lumograph Black and all the other carbon mix pencils out there they are totally different in a way that they are very compatible with graphite you can layer them on regular graphite um, you can layer regular graphite on these you know you can mix them blend them and layer them as much as you like with regular graphite and there's no issues at all with them now what I really like about these pencils um, is the contrasts I could achieve with them the 14B as you can see look I've really worn that away that's had a right pasting um, during the last drawing and it's a fantastic pencil you can get some really lovely dark tones um, and they still look like graphite you know it's not that all out sort of satiny matte black finish that you get um, you know with carbon pencils it really does look like a really dark graphite pencil without any shine um, I'm going to up the order in a few more of the 14B pencils actually because I can see me using them quite a lot um, in my drawings to get the darker tones and the darker contrasts but there's a tr bit of a trade-off with them you know with these softer leads like I've said in the last video the point retention is okay but I did have to spend quite a long time um, during the drawing to keep sharpening these every now and again to keep that point there um, you know the point does flatten off fairly quickly and I've, I didn't want to resort to mechanical pencils so I've got that you know consistent lead width uh, for the drawing so I kind of stuck with it and kept sharpening the wood case ones but I would really love Faber-Castell to bring out a set of mechanical pencils or just mechanical pencil leads um, with whatever recipe they're using in here I really would the trouble is you know the, the end of the pencils are cone shaped and as they're wearing away they're getting wider and wider and wider um, and I'm very much used to using mechanical pencils as well as regular wood case pencils and clutch pencils and everything you know for a lot of the pencil drawings I do so to stick to all wood case pencils just for one drawing is absolutely fine of course but um, you know you are going to need to keep sharpening them regularly you know to get fine edges on things um, you know nice fine lines and fine detail and everything so it wasn't really so much of a problem because it's the same kind of scenario with regular um, wood case pencils but like I say you, you do tend to want to press a little bit hard with these um, to try and get them into the grain and to get rid of that grainy look that is just kind of natural to carbon pencils so again they're going to wear down a little bit quicker if you are you know pressing a bit hard with them and another thing I really do like about these pencils is take for example the HB pencil if you do a side-by-side -side comparison with a regular graphite pencil 
um, and I use the Faber Castell 9000 so um, the tones are all very compatible they match very well indeed you know you can use the HP pencil from this and it's exactly the same tone as the Faber Castell 9000 but what I did find with these um, I can actually get a wider range of tones from one pencil than I can with a you know with regular graphite so if I compare the HB pencil in the matte series to the HB pencil in the 9000 series I can actually get lighter tones when I apply a very light pressure with the pencil the same light pressure that I'd apply with one of the 9000 pencils I can actually get lighter tones and then with a little bit more pressure I can actually get darker tones so all of all of the pencils all the way up to the 8B which I've got in the 9000 I can get slightly darker and slightly lighter with these so each pencil contains a wider variety of um, tonal value than a regular graphite pencil which is very useful because before I done the, the you know the finished drawing here I've done quite a few sketches in my sketchbook and I was finding these pencils really good for sketching you know I wasn't reaching for different grades of graphite I found that you know just by picking up a 2B pencil or a 4B pencil and by pressing lightly I could get the very very light tones almost like an HB and then putting a little bit of pressure on the pencil and layering up just with a 4B I could get you know like sort of 6B 8B kind of tone so I wasn't sort of reaching for different grades of pencil all the time and uh, I really liked that about these pencils now I just want to clear up a few questions that I had in the last video um, somebody mentioned when in fact I've had this question many times um, <laughs> somebody mentioned that um, the fact that I said you know there's carbon mixed in with these pencils somebody said well graphite is carbon too um, yeah I know <laughs> you know without sounding arrogant or anything I've been drawing for over 30 years and I do know <laughs> I do know that um, graphite is carbon too um, but just to clear things up to put it quite simply you know we refer to carbon pencils as something different to graphite pencils because basically we get regular graphite then we get carbon pencils and then we get charcoal pencils and you can turn around and say that all carbon pencils they're all made from carbon well yes they are of course they are but just to make life easier on ourselves you know we differentiate between all three of them by calling them regular graphite carbon or charcoal and there's lots of hybrids of them as well lots of versions in between like these and the Stedelmeyer's Lumograph black you know they are a graphite carbon mix so if anybody else leaves a comment saying you know graphite is um, carbon I'm not going to answer you <laughs> I'm going to ignore you I'm sorry you know I've had that comment so many times it's getting old now you know no offense or anything but you know it, it just simplifies it for artists to refer to it as graphite or as carbon or as charcoal even though all three of them are technically the same and something else I want to clear up as well somebody said it's an 11 piece set but yet there's only eight pencils yes that's right there's only eight pencils in the set but there's three other items here the blender the sharpener and the eraser and that's why it's called the 11 set because there's 11 pieces including these three here and your eight pencils and the range of pencils we've got here is an HB, a 2B, a 4B, a 6B, an 8B, a 10B, a 12B and a 14B and the 10B, 12B and 14B really are superb pencils you can get some really really lovely dark tones with them that don't clash in the drawing you know like I say they don't look like a mismatch or anything you know they really work and combined well with just your regular graphite so I think most graphite artists are really going to enjoy these but I think initially you're going to maybe swatch them out or do a little bit of sketching and you are initially going to really sort of notice a difference compared to your regular graphite pencils like I say they instantly feel different but you soon get used to it and you soon start to enjoy it actually because the overall look of the lay down of the graphite from these pencils is quite flat, quite smooth depending on what type of paper you're using you know if you're using quite a textured paper you're going to get a very grainy look with them 
Um, the paper that I used here was Daily Rowney Smooth Heavyweight and it is quite a smooth paper but there's a little bit of tooth on the surface there which allows um, you know the graphite to get in there and it allows you to layer up in multiple layers you know without filling the grain too quickly and not being able to apply more layers or anything like that but if you're using something very coarse you are going to get a grainy look you might like that look other artists might not so again that's kind of a personal thing there and your preference so all in all I think most most people will be very happy with these I think they're a great addition um, to your you know your graphite drawing kit I really do these are going to be a regular for me now um, you know whenever I really want those dark tones um, this is going to be the set that I go to because I know I can achieve those dark tones without that mismatch look that you seem to get with other carbon pencils and charcoal and things like that you know even if I'm not worried at all about graphite shine or graphite glare which I'm not I've never been one of these people to worry about graphite shine at all I know some artists don't like it and again it's a personal choice but it's like I said in my last video the joke that I always say um, you know when artists say I don't like graphite because it's too shiny it's like saying you don't like water because it's too wet it is what it is you know and I think Faber Castell have almost done the impossible here and made water less wet if you know what I mean they, they really have made graphite less shiny and still make it work with graphite um, and feel like graphite somewhat as well it's like I say you can feel a difference but it's not a million miles away from a regular graphite pencil it's very very close indeed um, and even the reduced glare that you get with these I think the trade-off is worth it you know if you're one of these that just doesn't like graphite shine when you do a few swatches of these and you compare them with a few swatches of your regular graphite tilt it in the light you can see a massive difference a huge difference even though you might see a little bit of a glare on these in certain lights at certain angles it really is nothing compared to um, what you see with regular graphite so I think Faber Castell have done a fantastic job here with these pencils and it really is what graphite artists I guess you know have been waiting for you know it's a carbon mix pencil that actually looks right with graphite and these tick all the boxes in that respect okay so there we go that's the final review or the, the verdict if you like um, you can see for yourself you know I'll just tilt this in the light again there's hardly any glare at all on that and um, you know the contrasts are really good and as you can see it doesn't look like a mismatch does it with graphite at all I mean you look at that and you wouldn't look at that and think oh that's carbon pencils you'd look at that and think that's got all the the subtleties and the delicacies of, of a graphite drawing you know it's not got that hard contrast of a um, carbon pencil or charcoal drawing you know not to say that that's a hard contrast obviously you can blend carbon and, and graphite and get some um, sorry carbon and charcoal and get some lovely soft looks but I think you miss a lot of subtleties out with those mediums a lot of the delicate blends a lot of the very subtle mid-tones and things like that you know you can achieve them with these pencils um, and I think it really does make your, your drawings pop you know I'm very 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 pleased with the results that I got I mean I was fighting with the pencils a little bit halfway through this drawing but I was still getting used to them I think once you're used to them um, you'll love them you absolutely love these pencils I do and if you're worried about um, you know splashing out what are they about 18 20 pounds something like that at the minute just buy two pencils buy the HB and the 14B I know you'll love the 14B um, for your dark contrast but then get the HB pencil just buy two pencils and just give them a test first I'm pretty sure once you've tested those two pencils you will invest in the full set of these and I just hope I really hope that Faber Castell bring out some mechanical pencil leads with these and possibly some um, woodless pencils as well it would be interesting to kind of scrape graphite powder from a 14B woodless pencil you know just to kind of see what it does um, so I'd love Faber Castell to expand this range um, 
of pencils because I think they're onto a winner here. Whatever the recipe is that they're using, um, and it could be anything. I mean, I keep referring to it as carbon, but they could be using some kind of dye-based pastel in there, which um, is the same type of thing that um, the Conte Pierre Noir pencils use. They, that's kind of a dye-based pastel uh, mixed in there. It could be the same thing in here. Who knows? You know, Faber-Castell aren't giving the recipe away, and I don't blame them because... I'd imagine it'd be copied by a lot of manufacturers because, you know, these really are good. But regardless of that, whatever they're doing, I hope they expand the range because um, these pencils are a joy to use once you get used to the slightly different feel of them. Like I say, which isn't massive, it's, it's only very slight and you'll soon get used to it. So yeah, there we go. Um, I hope that was helpful to you. Oh, and before I go, this drawing here... Um, is a full-time tutorial, uh, full, full lesson, all in real time um, tutorial over on my Patreon channel along with many many other um, drawing videos, tips and techniques videos, all different kinds of media um, over there. If you have a quick look through my YouTube channel you'll kind of see the work that I do. Um, so if you fancy drawing along with something like this and learning how to do some of these techniques and everything Go and check out uh, my Patreon page. It's only £3.50 a month, that's all it is, that's all it costs to join. And uh, you'll be made more than welcome over there. Got a great community of people over there. So I'll leave links to Patreon in the end screen cards and in the description uh, below as well. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. I hope both of these videos have been helpful to you in making a decision as to whether you want to buy these pencils or not. So if you found the video helpful, I'd really appreciate um, a like and don't forget to subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one take care everybody bye for now